Hi guys, it's Elise from Makeup Cake Addiction and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this gorgeous two-tiered M&M illusion cake. Not only am I going to show you how to bake and stack a really simple and kind of small sized two-tier cake, I'm also going to show you how to make this great illusion effect that makes it look like you've got a packet of M&Ms cascading down the side of the cake. It's gorgeous, it's simple and as always it's a little bit over the top. Let's get started. The things that you'll need, I've got a cake board to rest my cake on and I've got that on a spinning turntable. I'm using the equivalent of two packet cake mixes. You can use any recipe you like, but you'll need likely a double recipe. And I'm only making a small two-tiered cake today, enough to serve about 15 people. I've got some of our perfectly pipeled buttercream frosting and vanilla, some cotton wool balls. I've got my two little tins, so a four inch and a six inch, three large bags of regular M&Ms. This is a balloon stick. This is what we're going to use to create our illusion effect. So it's basically a plastic stick with a little balloon cup on the end, sold at most party supply stores. I've got a spoon and a pastry brush, some bamboo skewers and a pair of scissors, just a small or regular sized packet of M&Ms. I've got an offset spatula, a serrated edge knife and some wax paper. I've got some melted dark chocolate and in this container I've got just some syrup. So this is two tablespoons of apricot jam with three tablespoons of just plain water. Heat it up in the microwave for about 30 seconds to make like a simple sugar syrup that's really, really easy to make. I've got a six inch wooden cake board and then I've got a four inch just a cardboard cake board. You don't want that center board to be wooden and I'm matching those with my two cake tins. So a four and a six inch cake tin with a four and a six inch cake board. So first up, we're gonna line our tins. So I'm just gonna create little circles that go in the base of the tins. You just wanna basically trace around the bottom of your container and then use your scissors to cut that little circle of wax paper out, giving you the perfect size circle to evenly cover the base of your cake tin. Once that one's done, I use quite large sheets of either wax, baking or grease proof paper, it doesn't really matter. And I like to fold mine into three. This gives them a lot more stability and they're quite tall or quite high. So I wrap that around my hands to form like a bit of a collar and then I'm just going to slip that straight inside the cake tin. This gives me a really tall extended height on my cake tin so that I'm not limited to the three inches of the actual cake tin. We can bake that cake up to four inches if we want. Once both cake tins are lined, you want to fill them and I'm filling them almost all the way to the edge of that cake tin, letting the wax paper allow for the rise of the cake. I also do like to cut a second six and four inch circle and sit them on top of the cake, which is actually going to help the cake to rise really evenly and stay flat on top and stop it from cracking on top. Pop those off into a moderate oven and cook them until they spring back when touched in the middle. Coming back from the oven, when I take that top circle of wax paper off, you can see how nice and flat that cake is on top. So I just allow them to cool in the pan for about 15 minutes and then I just drag up the wax paper. And effectively that loosens the cake out for you. So you should just be able to tip it out, peel off the base piece of wax paper. And what you've got is a really nice, neat, relatively sort of square edged cake. Set those ones off to the side to completely cool down. Now you want to take your cardboard cake board and I'm going to use just a tea towel or something so that I'm not piercing my bench. You want to use your pair of scissors, nice sharp pointed scissors or a sharp pointed knife and very, very carefully make a small hole in the center. It doesn't have to be dead center, but as close as you can get it is good. So I'm just twisting my scissors. This is why we use a cardboard board and not a wooden board and just making a hole that's big enough for that balloon stick to fit straight through. This is going to give our cake stability and structure. Now you want to take some of that melted dark chocolate and spoon a generous teaspoonful onto that wooden six inch baseboard. Stick the balloon stick cup upside down into that chocolate and that's effectively going to glue it to the bottom of the board. You want to leave that to completely set and then you want to grab one of your little packets of M&Ms. Cut a really neat corner off and empty those M&Ms out. You can eat them or use them for decoration. And then you want to stuff your empty M&Ms packet full of those cotton wool buds. It's a little bit of a cheat. It makes it really nice and light, but still makes it appear to be full. You can see we're going to be sticking the stick straight in there and the cotton wool balls are actually going to help to hold the stick in place on the M&Ms wrapper. Once your little chocolate seal set on that plastic rod, you want to put a bit more chocolate onto your plastic balloon stick and you just want to slide it in. Take a moment to check that both of your cakes are slightly smaller than the cake boards that they're resting on. If not, you may need to trim them down just to make sure they fit within the confines of the cake boards. Using a serrated edge knife, you want to trim the top off of your bottom tier, making sure that it's nice and flat and even. Then you want to trim that bottom tier in half because we're going to put some delicious frosting in between our two layers. I like to turn my cake as I trim it. I always find it gives me a neater cut and a more even cut. 
Repeat the process with the top layer and you wanna line them up side by side and trim that so it's pretty well the exact same height as that bottom layer. So you're gonna get a nice even result. Split your cake in half and we're gonna brush it with some of that syrup. The reason we're brushing it with syrup is because it's actually gonna keep the cake moister and stop it from drying out. Now using your offset spatula, we're gonna give it a nice generous coating of buttercream frosting in the center, but don't go too thick here because there's gonna be a lot of frosting on this cake and buttercream can tend to be quite sweet. Once your cake's coated, you wanna lift it up and you wanna roughly center it on that balloon stick pole before sliding it down straight onto your six inch board. You do have a little bit of leeway if it's not exactly center to just kind of move it around, but try to make sure that those edges aren't overlapping the cake board underneath. You wanna repeat that process. So again with the syrup and again with the buttercream frosting, and we're gonna stick our second layer down on top of that balloon stick. To add to the support structure for this cake, we're also gonna add some wooden skewers to go along with that internal cake board and that balloon stick. So I'm gonna use four wooden skewers and we're just gonna push them down into the cake to get the rough measure. And then you wanna use your scissors just to cut them off to size. As with any time you make a tiered cake, they will generally have supports in them, cake boards, wooden dowels, and in our case, this balloon stick. While these balloon sticks are non-toxic, they also are non-edible. So as the decorator, it is your responsibility to make sure that if you're dropping this cake off, you're informing the venue that there are non-edible components in there and making sure that they're removed before the cake is served. Slide your cardboard cake board down over that balloon stick and then we're going to repeat the process of syrup and buttercream frosting and syrup and buttercream frosting with our two smaller layers of cake. Now your cake's stacked, I'm going to pop it on the turntable just for ease and we're going to give it a really nice thin crumb coat. So it doesn't really matter how much buttercream you put on here because we're going to scrape off any excess, but I do recommend keeping your buttercream in a separate bowl because it's going to get full of crumbs and other rubbish and you don't want to use this in your final coat. So as you can see, I've coated the entire cake in that buttercream frosting and now I'm just going around with my offset spatula and I'm really scraping it back and neatening off those edges at the same time. Once it's relatively neat, you want to pop your cake off into the freezer for about half an hour to an hour to let that buttercream coat completely set and get nice and firm. When your cake comes out of the freezer, you can take yet more buttercream frosting and I'm using the offset spatula to apply a second coat on top of that crumb coat. You're not going to pick up any crumbs because all those crumbs are now frozen into the base of the frosting, so you should get a really nice white coat on top. Once you add your first coat, you once again want to scrape it back and you want to make sure that you get it as neat as possible. So I use the offset spatula again just to really scrape back the sides and the more you can scrape in one long sweeping motion as you can with a cake turntable, the needier your result's going to be. You also want to take the time to try and just smooth out those corners and edges, but your buttercream frosting coat here does not have to be perfect because there are going to be a ton of M&Ms on this cake and if it's not perfect, it's gonna be at the back and nobody's gonna notice. With your cake frosted, you wanna take your presentation cake board and just a little dollop of your melted dark chocolate and you wanna use that chocolate just to glue the cake onto the board. Now, I didn't put the cake all the way in the center of the board. I actually left quite a bit more space at the front of the cake for M&Ms to go down onto the board. I'm gonna start by applying M&Ms to that balloon stick using a little bit of that melted dark chocolate, but I'm only gonna do like one little layer of them down the bottom, and then I'm gonna come and apply M&Ms to the front. So I found it easiest with my M&Ms to hand place them rather than to stick them all on in one huge jumble. There for some reason are a ton of blue M&Ms in a packet, and when I tried to stick them on as a handful, I felt like I just had way too many blue M&Ms. So I lined down the edges of where I want my M&M spill to fall and then I filled them in kind of trying to make sure that it looks a bit random but that I'm getting a really nice assortment of those M&M colours. Check out how many blues are still in my bowl. Once you've got your, I guess your V of M&Ms coming down the cake, go back to that balloon stick and you just want to add another three or four of those M&Ms. I'm doing this a few at a time because if you try to put all of your M&Ms up your balloon stick, the melted chocolate is just going to slide down. So you kind of want to put four or five on, let them set, four or five on. Now I'm using my offset spatula to apply a nice thin coat of buttercream frosting in kind of a little bit of a blob at the front of my cake board. This is going to be so that my M&Ms are spilling all the way down onto the cake board, almost so far that they're coming off the cake board. In between the little sections of placing the M&Ms on the presentation board, I'm going to sort of do this one section and then I'm going to go and do four or five more M&Ms up the balloon stick because those bottom ones will have dried. This helps you to kind of space out your time a little bit evenly. A little bit more buttercream frosting down onto the board and another little mountain of fallen M&Ms. And you just want to repeat that process until your entire stick is covered and you're happy with the spread of M&Ms that you've got all over your board.
If you love this video, make sure that you head on over to my channel, My Cupcake Addiction. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We upload several times a week a ton of stuff to do with cakes, cupcakes, baking, chocolate, all things sweet. You can adapt this cake from an M&M's cake to a Skittles cake to a Maltesers cake. The basic principle is yours to completely play with and make your own. To attach your M&M's wrapper now, it is as simple as just wedging it straight down onto that balloon stick so the balloon stick's sticking into that cotton wool that's inside. Now I'm just going to use a little bit more of that melted dark chocolate because you'll have a little bit of a gap and I'm just going to fill in any little gap between the packet and the balloon stick with the final couple of M&M's. You want to make sure that you can't see any balloon stick, that all you can see is the packet looking like the M&M's are just flowing straight down from it. I opted to dress the back of my cake with just a couple of little tiny scattered piles of M&M so the back didn't look too plain and anybody looking at the back of the cake is not going to be disappointed that they've missed out on M&M's. It does pay to have a few spare M&M's to serve with this cake because if you happen to be serving this cake to a guest who's seen all the M&M's at the front and they miss out on M&M's because they've got a back slice, they might be a little disappointed. I hope you guys have loved this tutorial, I've thoroughly enjoyed making it. This cake is gorgeous, but it's also relatively simple to make. If you've loved it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and I'd love it if you'd give it a share. As always, thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.